On the island of Circe, Odysseus and his men spent their last night before sailing off to a nightmarish destination. They were due to go to the terrifying realm of Hades to encounter the fortune teller Teresias' spirit and find out if it would be safe to return home. Elpinor, one of Odysseus' comrades, slept on the roof of Circe's palace to avoid the heat, but he would wake up dazed and, having forgotten that he was on the roof, he fell off the top of the roof, breaking his neck. Then Odysseus and his men grieved the loss of yet another shipmate, but they had no time to waste, and so they set off in their boat toward the kingdom of Hades. They landed at a place on the edge of the world, close to the land of the Cimmerians. That spot was shrouded in a thick mist. Once there, they disembarked, bringing the animals offered by Circe to be sacrificed. When they arrived at the exact place designated by the sorceress, Odysseus performed the sacrifice of two lambs, and their blood was poured into a pit. Odysseus and his men proceeded to be surrounded by spirits who wanted to drink the blood inside the den, but Odysseus was advised to chase them away until Tererius appeared. Much to everyone's surprise, between the spirits was Elpinor, the friend they had just lost. He still had not been buried, and so he requested Odysseus to promise him that he would grant him due burial honors. The Ithaca king assured him that he would do so. Next, the spirit of Odysseus' mother appeared. She had been alive when the hero left for the Trojan War, and the vision of his mother in that place broke the king of Ithaca's heart, and tears welled up in his eyes. Then old Tiresias appeared, who had been a master sage in life. He asked to drink from the blood of the pit Odysseus made. He quenched his thirst with the blood of the animals, and with blood still on his lips, Tiresias explained that Odysseus would encounter many more hurdles before he could return home. Poseidon harbored hatred for the hero for having wounded his son, the Cyclops Polyphemus. The soothsayer predicted that Odysseus would still be able to return home, but if his men disregarded the beasts of the god Helios, the king would get home alone on a foreign ship, as all of his comrades would perish on the way. But Odysseus was astonished to find Agamemnon there, the greatest leader of the Greeks during the Trojan War. He was assassinated by his wife after returning home from the war. There he also met the great hero Achilles, who appeared to have become embittered. Odysseus told him how his achievements in the Trojan War were reckoned and commemorated among men. But Achilles said that he preferred a thousand times to be a meager peasant and be allowed to see the light of day than to be the lord of the world of the dead. He also wondered how his son Neoptolemus was doing. Odysseus told him that he battled in the Trojan War and had proven himself a true disciple of Ares, accomplishing great deeds. Several others of his battle brothers would appear, such as Patroclus, Ajax, and others. But the mission of Odysseus in that land was finished and so he and his men returned to the ship, heading back to the island of Circe to accomplish the promise made to Elpinor. Once there, they laid their friend's body on a pyre so that his spirit could ultimately rest in peace. During the farewell banquet thrown by the sorceress, she would whisper in Odysseus's ear the horrendous dangers he was about to face. The hero and his men would soon confront the most dangerous things that the kingdom of Poseidon had to offer.